If you haven't noticed by now, I am the type of guy that's always on the hunt for something new and novel discoveries in the scientific space. And today I'm very excited to present to you guys Homo arginine, which is a different type of arginine that we don't see in supplemental form that I do believe has some potential benefit and some major therapeutic effect that needs to be considered if we're trying to optimize our health and well-being. So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, my name is Lucas, the founder of Boost Your Biology. And in this video, what we're gonna do is look into Homo arginine, which is different to the regular L-arginine that you see on the market and other arginine variants on the market. And we'll dive deep into some of its major benefits and also a little bit more about the new research. So you're probably wondering now, like what is Homo arginine? Now, Homo arginine is a basic amino acid that is synthesized from L-arginine by the enzyme arginine glycine amidinotransferase. It exerts beneficial effects not only on endothelial function, but also on markers of vascular homeostasis and cardiac function. So that is basically, this is what it's gonna be. Our main focus for the video will be centered around how homo arginine potentially may be a very protective compound for uh, the cardiovascular system and even potentially preventing cardiovascular diseases. So looking at the major benefits of homo arginine, this study looked at how or whether or not homo arginine is an endogenous protective cardiovascular factor. And we can see here the different effects that homo arginine can exert within the body acting as a substrate for ENOS, endothelial nitric oxide synthase, an inhibitor of arginase, an inhibitor of TNAP, some other biological effects, and also biomarker not causal. And then we can see whether or not that actually all of these factors can or do not play a role in protection from cardiovascular injuries. The major research that is currently being conducted on homo arginine is centered around its effects on the cardiovascular system. And so whether or not homo arginine has a protective effect on overall cardiovascular function remains to be elucidated. Now, looking at the major benefits and the highlights, what researchers have noted is that low blood levels of homo arginine predict adverse cardiovascular events and mortality. Secondly, supplementation with homo arginine has protective effects in some animal models of cardiovascular disease, and homo arginine supplementation is safe and well tolerated in healthy human volunteers. Now, it remains to be determined if homo arginine is a protective cardiovascular risk factor or a clinically useful biomarker of cardiovascular risk. Now, subsequent studies demonstrated an association between low homo arginine levels and increased probability of fatal and non-fatal cardiovascular events in patients with acute chest pain, congestive heart failure, or diastolic heart failure, or even peripheral artery disease. So low homo arginine also was associated with an increased cardiovascular mortality in population-based studies of elderly individuals and in the general population. In addition to its association with adverse cardiovascular outcomes, decreased homo arginine is also associated with increased overall mortality in patients with heart failure, peripheral artery disease, or stroke in elderly individuals and in the general population. So now you're probably wondering, where is homo arginine found? Is it found naturally in certain foods? Well, homo arginine is present in some foods and is readily absorbed in the gastrointestinal tract, but the main dietary sources of homo arginine are still not entirely clear, and it remains to be determined how much endogenous homo arginine is derived from food intake versus enzymatic production. Now, interestingly, what I researched and found was that the grass pea, or Lathyrus sativus, is a high yielding crop that actually contains a significant amount of this homo arginine. So grass pea is actually cultivated and consumed in India, Nepal, Bangladesh, and in many parts of Africa that are prone to recurrent droughts. And it is often considered a life saver crop or as an insurance crop. And it's considered an abundant source of protein for uh, humans and animal consumption. And the presence of homo arginine in quite significant amounts, which is a source of potent vasodilator nitric oxide in grass pea, can be used to explore its inherent potential 
to treat cardiovascular disorders associated with vascular endothelial function. So whether or not uh, homoarginine, we can get sufficient amounts through consuming this particular grass pea, or whether or not supplementation is necessary, that is what I'll sort of transition to and explore with you now. So research on supplementation of homoarginine in human subjects. Now, the most straightforward way to test whether homoarginine has direct protective cardiovascular effects in humans is to perform prospective clinical trials with homoarginine supplementation in populations of individuals at risk. Now, there was one phase one clinical trial in young healthy volunteers in which oral supplementation of 125 milligrams of homoarginine once daily for one month was well tolerated and led to a seven fold increase in plasma homoarginine concentrations without causing any detectable vascular or neurological abnormalities or other safety concerns. Now, this study lays the foundation for, for prospective clinical trials of homoarginine supplementation in patients with elevated or with established cardiovascular disease or at risk of um, cardiovascular disease or stroke. Now, a phase two trial of homoarginine supplementation in patients with stroke has been initiated, although animal models suggest that homoarginine supplementation might have clinical benefit regardless of baseline homoarginine levels, it is likely that its beneficial effects will be most pronounced in patients with lowest homoarginine levels. Now, fortunately, several subsequent studies have found that L-arginine supplementation to have an acceptable safety profile in a variety of clinical settings. Now, finally, because homoarginine is an endogenous amino acid that is present in food, it is technically categorized as a dietary supplement and therefore may be less attractive as a candidate for industry funding than other patentable interventions. Um, so this is yet another drawback with the natural compounds is that it will be difficult to fund research because they're, you know, we can't patent these interventions or, or big harma is what I call them. And they can't patent these particular compounds. If you are interested in staying up to date with all of the latest novel ingredients, just like homoarginine, I mean, I've been working very hard in the background. I've been creating a massive list of novel research ingredients and all these upcoming flavonoids and things like that. Do subscribe to my newsletter. That's where I'll be posting more about these new findings, these novel ingredients. I mean, you guys probably know by now, I'm always at the cutting edge. I like to be at the forefront of all these new discoveries. And also I am working on something in the background myself. I'm looking at releasing my own ingredients in the future. So please do yourself a favor and don't miss out. Do sign up to my uh, newsletter to stay up to date with all of that research that's happening in the background um, so that you can be at the forefront yourself and that you don't miss out yourself. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions or you want to leave a comment, please do that down below. Let's get a discussion going about homoarginine and otherwise I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.